Hi, I'm the Rap Critic, and this was a Patreon-voted episode. And if you'd like to vote on the next song I review, plus the episodes early and join my Discord, the link to that and all the other stuff you can catch me on are all available on the link tree below. So, according to patrons, let's talk about mainstream rappers making political messages. Yo! President is black, yeah. my Lambo's blue, blue. And my big, and my red now, anyone who watches my show knows that attempting a political message doesn't automatically make a good song. In fact, I've noticed that mainstream rappers seem to have a little trouble staying on topic when it comes to anything not pertaining to women, jewelry, and nice cars. And if there's one mainstream rapper that you weren't expecting deep political thought from, it's this guy. Wham, wham, wham. Bitch on him, baby. So you're gonna have to excuse my skepticism if I wasn't exactly expecting a coherent political message. Not that all rappers should be super deep or anything, but in trying to listen to Lil Baby's discography, there's just not a lot of exciting stuff to get out of it. So much of it just feels like yet another drop in the Migos future derivative auto-tune wasteland of the current mainstream. At the same time though, as a concept, I do like the idea of a big name artist using their platform to call attention to social injustice. In a way, it's a harbinger for how bad things have gotten. I mean, God knows the recent George Floyd murder by cops have caused civil unrest in all 50 states and around the world, and everyone's seeing the richest government in the world somehow being super slow to actually do anything to protect its citizens, and we're seeing it all in real time because everyone's home on their phones all day because of the disease that shall not be named lest my video be demonetized. And it's like, damn, guys like him are basically paid to not make you think about stuff like this, and even he can't ignore it. So, okay, I'll bite it. Let's see what he has to say. Trade my 4x4 for GC3. Oh, so your opening lyric on the political song is about how you traded a nice car for another nice car? That, what, that doesn't fucking matter, what the f- mm -mm. All right, calm down. His last music video was about cleaning his jewelry, so you know, maybe the commercial rapper just needs a second to warm up. But if I'm being fair, the actual intro to the song itself lays out the reason behind what sparked the current protests. The main message here is that they want to see those officers involved. They want to see those officers arrested. Kicking the song off with a full-throated call for justice in wake of the almost nine-minute video of jaw-droppingly clear proof that police are not being held accountable for their abuses of power. Further evidenced by the fact that none of the cops involved with the George Floyd killing received any significant punishment for the murder until the goddamn world stood up about it. So in that vein, yeah, I think it's dope that an artist like them is not letting the opportunity to speak up at such a crucial moment pass him by. And while lots of rappers who try to talk about tragedy come off as preachy or insincere, he ingratiates himself to the listener by describing how he grappled with the topic in an honestly self-aware way. So here he's saying, like, yeah, at first he was living his life just all drunk and rowdy until he got arrested and saw firsthand how quickly the system brought down overly harsh sentences in real time to one of his friends, waking him up to the blatant disparity. We just some products of our environment, how the fuck they gonna blame us? And I truly appreciate a lyric like this. Lyrics that really spell out how the illegal things rappers like him talk about come from a life where there weren't many resources to thrive outside of illegal means. I can't lie like I don't rap about killing and dope, but I'm telling my youngest to vote. I deal with I dig as I did, I no choice and no hope. I was forced to just jump in and go. I love this. I absolutely love it when rappers lay bare the political implications behind their subject matter. Bringing into sharp relief the fact that rapping about drugs and shit is more than just an aesthetic decision. It's something that echoes a certain reality for so many poor people just trying to get by in a system that's quick as hell to lock up its poor citizens for violating its laws, while at the same time preemptively putting those people in the kinds of situations that make breaking those laws a necessity to survive in the first place. And so here he's saying, I literally didn't have the understanding to radically change the shitty conditions I was born into outside of drug dealing. When we get it, the system is wicked, just learn how to pick it. Knowledge is power, I swear I'm a witness. But now that he knows the shit he had to deal with was deeper and systemic, he wants to let the next generation have the knowledge he now has about the system and the courage to confront it. And this isn't just talk, either. There's footage of him leading protests. Dude's actually out there risking his neck in front of the fuzz, and he filmed part of it for the music video. Fuck it, I'm going on the front line. He gonna bust your ass if you come at that gun line. And I dig the little reference to the gun line from the movie Life from 1999. You spit, you pee. You so much you stick your Johnson out over the gun line. You will be shot. A film starring Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy that was basically about how infuriatingly cruel prison and the legal system was for black people before the civil rights era. They training officers, the killers, and shooting protesters with these rubber bullets. They regular people, I know that they feel it. And, you know, when you get down to it, it doesn't really take some tenured professor of political analysis to see why people are so angry about what's going on. People speaking for the people, I'm proud of them. Stick together, we can get it up out of So in that vein, he big ups the people in the protest themselves for organically coming together to stand up against the injustices we're seeing. Oh, and he made a killer hook to sum up the mood. It's bigger than black and white. It's a problem with the whole way of life. Using the phrase, it's bigger than black and white as a reference to the paint job of the cop cars, but also to illustrate that the issue with current policing is about more than racial discrimination. It's about how they operate at the core as exploiters of the poor that needs to change. 
I mean, yes, cops kill and imprison more black and Latino people than white people per capita, but, you know, they imprison poor people of any color more than anything, and that's just not an accident. Cops have quotas to fill, and poor people have less means to legally fight back. And the people that would have the least amount of means to fight back are, you know, the people that have had their wealth stolen generationally for the last couple of centuries. Can't change overnight, but we gotta start somewhere. And that's exactly it. That's the energy I think people are coming at this whole uprising with. Shit, we've been hearing all these experts on podcasts talk about how rigged this whole system is from the jump, so if people are out there raising hell in the face of injustice and it's reaching such a global scale, well, fuck, let's keep applying that pressure till the powers that be respond by righting the wrongs we can all plainly see are happening. Might as well go ahead and start here, we didn't have a hell of a year. Ugh, ain't that the truth. I mean, man, his beleaguered delivery of these lines just matches the atmosphere of the times perfectly. Like, if I could be completely frank... Jesus fucking Christ, 2020. Can we have a slow news day? Just once. You know, in a way, he is right. Each individual cop is not responsible for the latent racism within the police as a whole. There are plenty of people who just want to do their jobs right and collect their paychecks while not trying to let their bias inform how they do their job. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, hands up if you're one of the officers who actually imprisoned the cops responsible for the deaths of all those people they clearly didn't need to kill. Oh, well, not enough hands proportional to the amount of people that have unnecessarily died by the hands of the police? Oh, no, you know, that's interesting. And while, like I said, no, you can't blame each individual for not collectively overhauling a corrupt system. But in any job that's fundamentally rooted in exploiting inequalities, you kind of have to accept that that job requires you to be a bit of a bastard for being involved, wouldn't you say? Like, if we're not judging by identity, but by actions, and one of those actions includes passively defending a cop who killed someone when they clearly didn't need to... I'm not really sure how you can still consider yourself to be one of the good ones. Every color person ain't dumb, and all whites not racist. I be judging by the mind and heart, I ain't really in the face. Okay, so this seems like a bit of an obvious point to make, right? The rub, though, is that not all racist people think they're racist, because the higher-ups in this country have a lot of stake in keeping things the way they are, so they drown our media with skewed data and purposeful misinformation to produce the conditions that provide justification for pre-existing racial biases in a way that allows you to not think about it. Like, remember that whole thing where that John Tron guy who believed all black people, regardless of how rich they were, were just more criminally inclined than even the poorest white person, and some other stuff about communists? Well, that dude probably swears up and down that he's not racist. He's just accepting what the facts are about black people and acting accordingly, you know. But that's how modern racism works. I mean, you look at the fact that black people make up such a disproportionate percentage of the jail population and you think, well, well, hey, maybe they just commit more crime. But as soon as you take into account the kind of significant detail that the police force in this country was originally intended to catch slaves and return them to their plantations, you know, things start to snap into focus. And it's that background radiation of white supremacy in this country that black people are forced to be hyper aware of. An awareness that unfortunately can turn you bitter towards all white people, causing you to develop the type of mindset that encourages you to prejudge people as well. But the fact is, there are plenty of white people now and in the past who didn't fall for those mental traps and are actively fighting against the institutions that enable these racist mindsets in the first place. A line like this is to tell both people, don't be fooled by the misconceptions of a society that purposefully indoctrinated us to be more divided. I can see in your eye that you fed up. Fuck around, got my shot, I won't let up. They know that we a problem together. And now we got the power that we need to have. They don't want us with it, and that's why they mad. That's right, goddammit. Because at the end of the day, these people in the streets are only there as a reaction to an injustice that's being ignored. And every day these people protest is a day reminding you that these injustices are still happening. And we as a people are not gonna stop paying attention until the direct reason why people are angry enough to get out there are finally addressed. Or at least until enough billion dollar corporations post enough black squares to their Instagram pages. Cause, cause that's like almost the same thing as them using their vast resources to alleviate inequality, right? Well anyways, overall I give this song a four out of five. There's maybe one or two odd lines, but for the most part, the message is solid, the music perfectly fits the atmosphere, and the hook is freaking anthemic. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but the song that captures the political zeitgeist at a time when the people are demanding change is not coming from a Kendrick, it's not coming from a J. Cole, it's coming from a Lil Baby. Damn, bro. <laughs> Children really are the future. But hey, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe button and the bell because it helps the most. And if you want to get my merch, follow me on social media, listen to my podcast, or support the show, all those links are in the link tree below. So check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.